Hi, I'm Nick Rodriguez with the Squid Ink Service Team, and today we're going to talk about flushing out your Copilot 500 printhead for maintenance, long-term storage, and shipment. A couple of things you're going to want to have on hand before we get started is internal cleaner for the specific ink type that you're using, a couple of check catch trays, a syringe, a filter for the syringe, some lint-free wipes, and a set of rubber gloves. So before we get started, what you're going to want to make sure you do is go ahead and power down your controller so that there's no power going to the printhead. What we're going to need to do next is just kind of prep the area. What we're going to have to eventually do is disconnect our ink line from the back of the printhead. So we're going to want to have some sort of a cap or something um, that'll stop the ink from coming out uh, while you're performing the flush. Now, no matter if you're shipping it or if you're preparing your head for long-term storage, the first step is always going to be the same, and that is we're going to go ahead and flush out the print head with the internal cleaner so that no ink um, is left in the system. So first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and disconnect our ink line. I do have a lure cap here that I'm going to use to plug that ink line so that I don't have any um, ink dripping on my floor while I'm doing the maintenance. So at the back of the printhead, you're going to identify your ink line by the import on the back of the printhead here. We're going to remove that. Just unscrewing that cap off, and we're going to go ahead and place this fitting on the top here. That way we can go ahead and put this to the side and not worry about ink leaking from us uh, while we're doing our maintenance. The next step here is to go ahead and place a catch tray just underneath the print head here. And we're gonna want one to the side here so we can actually drain what's in the output check valve as well. Once we have that situated, we can go ahead and fill our syringe with our internal cleaner. So since today we are working with an oil-based system, we are using the PZ1043 internal cleaner, um, which will be enough to flush out the system, and it also kind of acts as our storage solution for oil-based systems as well. So first thing I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to fill my syringe with this appropriate cleaner. And once I have that fill, I'm just gonna remove my tube to drain whatever was left in that tube out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and install my filter on the, and the actual syringe itself at the base of the syringe. This way we can filter out anything that may have been in the bottle, especially if your bottle was open while, while before we started this process. So, now that I have that filled, I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my ink inline. Very similar to how we uh, removed the ink in the first place. Going to slide that in there and screw it tight. We don't have to go too crazy with the tightness there, just nice and snug. Now, the first step of the actual flushing of your 500 print head is we're gonna to wanna to make sure we flush out all the fluid from the entire system. This includes the, uh, the output check valve line here. So I'm gonna uncap that line, and I'm gonna point it right down into my tray. And with my other hand, I'm gonna go ahead and gently apply pressure until I start seeing some fluid come out of there. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. Now if you notice while we're flushing, we've got fluid coming out both the print engine and the output line, and that's normal. Um, it's just the path of least resistance. So as soon as I'm done with my first syringe, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap my line here, my output line. And I'm gonna disconnect my syringe. Move this tray out of the way.
and we're gonna go ahead and refill the syringe one more time. Go ahead and refill our syringe. Like so. Let's go ahead and drain what's in the intake tube and install our filter. There and there. Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to purge out the front of the printhead. So I'm gonna reconnect my syringe back to the ink in port and I'm gonna force the majority of the cleaner out the actual print engine itself. So that's what we're gonna focus on right now. Install my syringe. And again, gently apply pressure to that and just watch for the ink to, or the fluid to drain out. And what we're looking for is something a little bit clear like that. We've got a little bit of ink left in that, but it's not too bad. So once you've completed your flush routine with the internal cleaner, um, we've gone out the drain tube, we've gone out the print engine, we can go ahead and take a non-abrasive lint-free wipe and clean the face of the print head off. Now, you wanna make sure when you are wiping these print heads that we wipe in one direction only we don't want to go up and down and create friction possibly on the nozzle plate. So we're going to go ahead and just wipe in one direction and clean that off. Now if we were flushing for maintenance reasons, print quality issues or debris on the face of the print engine, this would be the end of our step. We would go ahead and reintroduce ink at this point and test it out. So if you were prepping your head for long-term storage, meaning you're going to be not using your print head for weeks or months at a, at a time, depending on the ink type, now would be the time we would either introduce our storage solution, if it's a solvent-based printer, or we could go ahead and keep our internal uh, cleaner in there if it's oil. For our all oil systems, the internal flush also acts as the storage solution. So it's important to know that if you are going to store your print head, we want to make sure we fill that print head with the proper storage solution whether it's internal cleaner for oil or solvent storage solution for solvent-based printers. You don't want to store your print head dry. You always want something in it. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and show you how to go ahead and, um, and cap that print head and, and wrap the face of it with a lint-free wipe. We've already covered flushing for maintenance. We've already covered um, storage solution for long-term storage. The last piece of this video is going to be discussing how to prep your print head for a possible shipment. Now, when we're doing that, the first step is the same, flush all the ink out with the internal cleaner. But the last step that we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and remove all that cleaner so that there's no fluid in the print head while it ships. I know we said we don't want the head to be stored with uh, just air in the system, but for shipment purposes, this is going to be the best practice. We'll go ahead and ink it up as soon as we get it back in here. First thing we're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your filter and just fill it with air. All right. Now again, you can go ahead and add your filter here just in case there's anything in the air that you would have been able to pull in. And you always want to add your filter after you draw. You don't want to have it on place while you're drying in and then also while you're expelling. So dry in the air or your fluid, add your filter, then your line. We're going to go ahead and connect this right to the back of the printhead like we've been doing this whole time, right to the ink port. And what I'm going to do is just gently apply pressure. Then we're going to want to see here all the ink expel from the print engine. And this may take a couple of tries, so we'll go ahead and fill it in first and we'll take a look at it. And again, drawing in air, replace my filter, connect it to my line, and we'll do one more pass. 
looks like we got most of it out of the way. So what we're looking for is we don't want this head to be full of ink for shipment so that there's no reason that it will uh, um, get the packaging and everything else covered in, in fluids. So once we have that aired out and ready for storage, we're going to go ahead and, and, or shipment, we're going to go ahead and remove it from our mounts. And I'll show you what it looks like or how it should look like before you go ahead and ship it out. So with your print head removed from the mounting, you're going to want to make sure you also disconnect your output check valve and your ink line from the back of the print head. What you'll see here on our ports is we've got a couple of caps here. Some of these caps should be provided in your maintenance kits or your starter kits. So you should be able to cap these off like so, so nothing uh, can come out or come into the ink system while it's in shipment. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cover this front nozzle strip with a lint-free wipe. In order to do that, you're going to want to have a couple of rubber bands and a spare lint-free wipe on hand. What I like to do is take my lint-free and fold it the long way, short way, and again like so. We just need it to be big enough to cover this strip here. So I'll go ahead and place it right in front of the strip, take my first rubber band, and we're just going to go around the top. And then again, down the bottom. This print head now should be placed in a bag, Ziploc bag, or wrapped somehow in plastic. And then it should be ready to be packaged and shipped out to wherever it's going, either back to us or to another destination. Again, my name is Nick Rodriguez with the Squid Ink Service Team. I hope you found this video on how to flush your Copilot 500 print head out for storage, shipment, or maintenance helpful. Um, if you'd like to find more videos like this, go ahead and find us elsewhere on the web or on YouTube. Thanks for watching.